Second Chronicles chapter 8. And it came to pass at the end of 20 years, when Solomon had built the house of the Lord and his own house. Let's go back to 1 Kings 6.18. My voice sounds scratchy. First Kings six eighteen. Actually six thirty eight. Six thirty eight. No interesting note about this twenty years. And in the seventh year of the month bowl, which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all his parts thereof. And according to all the fashion of it, so was the seven years in building it, the temple. It said 20. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years and finished all his house. 13 and 7 is 20, but look how many years he spent on his own buildings rather than the Lord's house. He spent more time building his own place than he did for the Lord's house. Verse 2, that the cities which Harum, that's, that's David's friend, the one who helped with the cedar trees and provide men, had restored to Solomon. Solomon built them and caused the children of Israel to dwell therein. So Solomon gets land back. Decay, fallen, ruin, he rebuilds them and puts the Jewish people in them. And Solomon went to Hamazab, Hamazab, and prevailed against it, conquered it, and he built Tadmor in the wilderness. What a place to have. A wilderness is nothing. There's no life in the wilderness. And yet here's this place inside the wilderness. And all the store cities. I mean, we got backwards today. We got all the store places for all your stuff that you got too much for your house. It's places that were warehouses. Nothing new under the sun that you got these places you go, you pay money, and you get this little booth to put more junk in. Solomon had the same thing here. And some of those places are called or have the word store in it some way or another. And I bet that they only realize they are quoting from the King James Bible. I can imagine, which I don't look, but I can imagine what the modern Bible said. Because you got to make a word easier than store. You can't understand store. Uh, which he built in Hamath. And he built Beth, that means house of, Beth Horon, the upper, so high, and Beth Horon, the neither, a little lower. So it was like a hill area. Fenced cities with walls, gates, and bars. And that's what Trump's trying to do with America and Mexico. He's building walls, gates, and bars. Bala, those the Baal, and all the store cities that Solomon had, all the chariot cities, all the horsemen that Solomon is not supposed to have, the cities of the horsemen. So these are military outposts for chariots and for the horsemen thereof. And all Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and in Lebanon and throughout all the land of his dominion. So he's building, building, building. He's building a temple. He's building his houses. He's building walls. He's building places. He's fixing places. He's got all kinds of storage areas. So the land of Israel under Solomon is in great prosperity. It is like the time of Adam and Eve being the garden. Everything's there, all the creature comfort and everything like that. And yet, as Adam and Eve, uh, Solomon is going to fall. So when you get this politics, let's make everybody rich. Let's give everybody the good life. Let's give everybody a taste of wealth and, and freedom. That's going to make everybody right. It doesn't. It doesn't. Adam and Eve had the perfect environment. Solomon has the riches and plentiful environment. And still there will be sin. As for all the people that were left to the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, 
and the Jebusites, which were not of Israel. We mean all the people left over. God told them to wipe them totally out. There were not supposed to be anybody left over. But of the children who were left after them in the land, they weren't supposed to be there, whom the children of Israel consumed not, they were supposed to. Then did Solomon make to pay tribute unto this day. And that's a tax that you can stay here. We'll make money off you. We'll earn an income off you when God told you don't have them there. Solomon should defeat them. Solomon should get rid of them. He's going to start marrying to these, to these people now that are not supposed to be there, which God told him not to. When God says get rid of something in your life, you get rid of it. They'll come back to do more damage. But the children of Israel did, but the children of Israel did Solomon make no servants of his work. He didn't put them to petty deals. But they were men of war, soldiers, and chief of his captains, head of his military, and captains of his chariot horses, military leaders. He made the children of Israel the overseers. He made them the bosses. He made them of the, the white hats, have you. All those that were not Jewish people, he made them the under people. And these were the chief of King Solomon's officers, even 250, and bare rule over the people. Now, verse 11 is just a side note that it should not be here. But it is. And it's showing all the prosperity of Solomon that he knew what he was doing when he sinned. And Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David unto the house that he had built for her, built her own house. For he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the place says the places are holy. Whereunto the ark of the Lord had come. Solomon's admitting that, hey, marrying that girl, marrying that woman was wrong. My city, my God is so holy, she can't be here. Solomon cannot bring his sin home. And almost every child that's grown up has had something that they hid from mom or hid from dad. They don't want mom and dad to find it. They hide it. They sneak it. That's exactly what Solomon's doing here. He knows that marriage is wrong. So when we start seeing these horses and we start seeing, well, the people of the land, we'll just give them taxes and, and we'll keep them here and we'll make them, you know, the lesser of the people. And then now I have this woman I'm not supposed to marry. And then it's going to build, it's going to build, it's going to build. And Solomon's going to just mess up his entire life. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Lord, still serving the Lord, on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the porch. That would be the brazen altar. <clears throat> Even after a rate every day, offering according to the commandment of Moses, so there was a lamb every day and every evening, on the Sabbath, on the new moons, that's the first of the month, on the solemn feast, three times in a year, even in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's day after Passover, the Feast of Weeks, that's Pentecost, and again, there's that Feast of Tabernacles again showing up. That's the time when he finished the temple. That's probably the time that Jesus was born. Psalm is doing everything that the law has told him to do. But he's got much gold, he's got much silver, he's going to marry a whole bunch of women, and he's going to, back to Egypt. Verse 11. Problems. And he appointed according to the order of David, what his father set forth, the courses of the priests, their serv the service, and the Levites to their charges that's the first time that word shows up charges david went one step further when it came to the levites he also added the music to the service of the temple he set up instruments he made instruments 
he wrote psalms and hymns for the glory of God. And Psalm is going one more step more than, all right, here are the Levites. And there are Levites, but not all the Levites are priests. And then there are priests who are always Levites. And the ministering of that temple of the sacrifices, of the candle, of the tables, of the showbread, of the high priest, of the watering, of the washing. Okay, we got that office. Now David has set up another office of the priest of joyful proclaiming and thanksgiving to God. And this is what he's setting forth here. He kept the song service to praise and minister before the priest as the duty of every day required. The porters also by their courses to every gate. For so David, the man of God, commanded. So what we have today, mostly everywhere where you go in most workplaces, Somebody has a radio or a CD or a cassette tape playing music while you work, while you're eating, while you're shopping, while you're doing whatever you have, you're doing, there is music in the background. And I bet they didn't realize that comes from the Bible. When they're at that brazen altar and they're taking those sacrifices, they're killing those sacrifices and they're washing the head, washing the body and they're going in there, setting off the bread and they're taking away the bread when they're doing all the work of the temple, there is music in the background giving glory to God. I got to wonder, because it's never mentioned, was this also in the time of Jesus? It's never said. It's not one time mentioned in the, in the gospel about singing, except for that time after Jesus had the last supper with his disciples, then they sang a hymn going to the garden. quite interesting because had they done what David told them to do had they set up the singing at the temple do you realize they would be singing about Jesus Christ who was sitting there teaching them they would be praising Jesus Christ as God as they rejected him they required the porters those are the ones at the doors also by their courses at every gate for so had David the man of God commanded. So there, there are people who you got to check in at the doors. There are ushers who are going to make sure you are there for the right purpose. There are TSA agents there making sure that you're not doing what you're not supposed to be doing and bringing what you're not supposed to be bringing. So I guess you can find a security in the Bible for the building. And they departed not from the commandments of the king and from the priests and the Levites concerned any matters concerning the treasures. Jesus was over by the treasury. He made note that one widow woman cast in her two mites. We are in the places where Jesus was. As the Levite said, you know, this is what you're supposed to bring, it says, that's what they brought. If the king said you're supposed to do this, they obeyed the powers that be in the government and there was no protesting. No protesting will come up under Rehoboam. Well, I guarantee you there were little groups outside, and little groups here. Now, all the work of Solomon was prepared unto the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord, and unto it was finished. So the house, I mean, for the house of the Lord was perfected. Then went Solomon to Ezer Geber, and to Elioth at the seaside in the land of Edom, that's Esau, and Hiram sent him by the hands of his servants ships, and servants that had knowledge of the sea, seamen, marine, marine, yeah, can't say it, mariners, and they went with the servants of Solomon to Ophir and took thence 450 talents of gold and brought them to King Solomon. And this, this will find out later on. They bring apes and peacocks. And he sends out more treasures. More things. He's had enough. He's growing in prosperity. For his fault. 